What's up, my fellow gamers? I don't know if you guys have been keeping up with gaming news lately, but let's just say the Xbox has not really been having a great couple of months recently. And I want to make a video at some point where it really just goes into all these different categories of things that are going wrong with this console. And I want to offer like some genuine room for improvement here because I think a lot of the stuff can be fixed, but it's just the compiling of everything that could possibly go wrong all at once hitting in these past two months it's just not a good look and i think the xbox brand is probably in the weakest spot it's ever been in even over 2013 in my personal opinion i think there has never been a worse time for microsoft in the video game industry when it comes to their consoles i want to make sure i stress that their consoles i understand that microsoft's gaming revenue has never been higher part of that is because of their success with pc and game pass i understand that but what i'm talking about here is from a console perspective you know the thing that everybody went out and spent well i guess not everybody because they're not really selling very well but the thing that people went out and spent three or five hundred dollars on in the form of the xbox series s or the xbox series x i myself own one of each i also own a playstation 5 now because of final fantasy 16 and how amazing that game looks but needless to say what we're discussing here is the console side of the business xbox whether they want it to be something different in the future right now it's it is still predominantly a console brand. That is what Phil Spencer got up on stage in 2019 and sold people the vision of. The world's most powerful console. The greatest games lineups in Xbox history that have never panned out the way that it's been planned. And an overall sense of disappointment from the people who listened to Phil Spencer and Microsoft's words, put $500 down and went out and bought an Xbox Series X over a PlayStation 5 this generation. Generation. Now, Phil Spencer can say, well, console isn't our long-term plan, which in his recent interview is basically what he hinted at. You know, that's great and all, but why are you selling people something that you are not delivering on? That is the issue here. You know, Game Pass can be the future for Microsoft's gaming division, but stop selling hardware if you don't want to fulfill the expectations that you yourself set when you gladly separated your customers from 500 bucks of their money on a vision you never intended intended on upholding and that is the issue that I have with this interview and I want to just go ahead and play a clip from it because I really think this is probably the most damning thing that I heard in the entire thing and there's a lot of I guess speculation debate and just overall interpretation of what is actually being said here so I want you all to listen to it in its entirety for yourselves draw your own conclusion and then we're going to talk about this shit. Well, we'll definitely continue to focus on on making our console experience as, as great as it can be. I like the the homepage refresh and some stuff. I will say this might be disruptive as well. Um, we have a different vision. You know, Paris talked about this. It's play the games you want with the people you want anywhere you want. We want Xbox to be something that people who buy our console can feel like they're a member of, obviously, who are playing on PC, who are playing on cloud, that they feel like, feel like they're full members um, of our ecosystem. Game Pass players can play um, on many different devices, and, and we remain fully committed to that. Um, we're not in the business of out-consoling Sony or out-consoling Nintendo. Um, there isn't really a great solution or win for us. And I know that will upset a ton of people, but it's just the truth of the matter is that when you're third place in the console marketplace and the top two players are as strong as they are and have, um, in certain cases, very, very dis discreet focus on doing deals and other things that will um, that kind of make being Xbox hard for us as a team that's on us, not on anybody else. Our vision is that everybody who's on console has to feel like they have a great experience and they're a first class citizen. They've invested a ton in our platform, but we are not in a position and I, I see it out there. I see commentary that if you just build great games, everything would turn around. It's just not true that if we go off and build great games, all of a sudden you're going to see console share shift in some dramatic way. We lost the worst generation to lose in the Xbox One generation where everybody built their digital library of games. Um, so when you go and you're building on Xbox, we want our Xbox community to feel awesome. 
But this idea that if we just focused more on great games on our console, that somehow we're going to win the console race, I think doesn't really lay into the reality of most people. Like 90% of the people every year who walk into a retailer to buy a console are already a member of one of the three ecosystems. And their digital library is there. This is the first generation where the big games that they're playing um, were games that were available last gen, when you think about Fortnite and Roblox and Minecraft. Like the continuity from generation to generation is so strong. I see a lot of pundits out there that kind of want to go back to the time where we all had cartridges and discs and every new generation was a clean slate and you could switch the whole console share. That's just not the world that we are in today. There is no world where Starfield's an 11 out of 10 and people start selling their PS5s. That's not going to happen. Um, so what we have to do, and we have this unique vision because we see what creators want to do. Creators want to build games that can meet players on any screen. People play with their friends regardless of what other screen they're on. And the console is the core of the Xbox brand. There's no doubt. So. So like we will stay focused on making sure that console experience is awesome. But I know some people want to hold us up of just being a better green version of what the blue guys do. Um, and I'm just going to say, like, there's not a win for Xbox in staying in the wake of somebody else. We have to go off and do our own thing with Game Bass, with the stuff we do with xCloud and the way we build our games. Sorry, I was a little long winded. No. So personally, how I interpret this is it's a massive cop out and a massive straw man to what the majority of people are complaining about when it comes to Xbox. Because unless you're a fanatical fanboy on Twitter, I don't think anyone honestly thinks that Microsoft is somehow going to make a miracle recovery if they release a couple good games that are like 10 out of 10 quality and people will start selling their PlayStations in droves to go out and buy an Xbox. That is not a realistic Xbox expectations so i do agree with phil spencer on that but i feel like he's using that to like generalize the overall expectation of what's going to happen if xbox releases great games because i completely agree exclusives unless you're nintendo do not win the console war which i guess even in the case of nintendo they're not really in the console war at this point because the switch is more of a supplementary device than anything else the only real console war this day is between microsoft and sony because give or take two or three games a year they're pretty much the exact same platform if you really want to boil it down but what i think phil's doing here is like coming up with excuses like well even if we did release good games it wouldn't matter because sony's still beating us you know they're just too good at what they do people like them too much we lost last generation so we would never be able to catch up with them but who cares if you catch up you still have people buying your console phil you still have people dropping 500 or 300 bucks on an xbox series series console subscribing to game pass who want to play great games and sure through releasing great games you may never sell as many consoles as the playstation has but i'll give you a first-hand experience for me i had a playstation 3 for all of that generation the entire time i had that playstation 3 when xbox was dropping absolute heat like the gears of war trilogy the halo games the fable games forza some of the highest rated games of that generation keep in mind exclusively on the Xbox, in the back of my middle school mind, the only thing I was thinking, dude, I need to save up enough money so I can get a 360 so I can play these amazing games. It didn't matter that I already had a PlayStation 3. I wanted to go out and buy a secondary console because there were games releasing on it that I wanted to play. It didn't matter to me that I already owned all of my Call of Duties, all my Battlefields, all my third-party games on the PlayStation 3. I saw enough value value in the games that Xbox was putting out on the 360 that I was like, shit, man, I want to play some of these games. The exact same thing happened in the Xbox One generation. I bought a PS4 because I refused to spend 500 bucks on an inferior console with a spy camera included when I could get a PS4 for 100 bucks cheaper that was more powerful. So I started out the generation with a PlayStation 4. And if you remember that generation, Sony really had jack shit for the first couple of years in the terms of content on the PlayStation. PlayStation 4 that they themselves were releasing on the platform. So what did I do when I saw that Xbox lowered the price by a hundred bucks, took the camera out of the box and had a consistent flow of great games at the beginning of the generation? I went out and bought an Xbox One, even though I already had a PlayStation 4. So I don't understand why he's acting like we live in this vacuum of a world where literally only one console can fit into every home. That is
That is not realistic. That is not the case. And I know he knows that because I guarantee you he probably has a Switch, a PlayStation, an Xbox. In fact, he's mentioned that several times that he plays on almost every single platform. So Phil, we're talking about a console at the end of the day. We're not talking about buying like a Lexus and then expecting someone to go out a year later and buy like a second car, like a Mercedes or something. We're talking about $500 consoles at the end of the day, or in the case of the Series S, a $300 console. It is entirely possible and very probable that if Xbox has enough compelling content on its platform, that there will be a number of people who, even if they already have a PlayStation 5, will go out and buy an Xbox Series console, regardless of the fact that they had a PlayStation 4 last generation and now have a PlayStation 5 this generation. Because if you all provide enough reasons to make people want to play on that console, they will go out and buy it. Look at the Nintendo Switch. The Wii U got absolutely battered that generation. What, they sold like less than 20 million units? I forgot what it was. The Wii U was a complete and total failure for Nintendo because one, it was a gimmicky console and two, the actual release of games was incredibly slow and you know, you would go like an entire year sometimes without a release from Nintendo when it came to exclusive content. But look at the Nintendo Switch. Nintendo buckled down, got their studios in check. They put out an insane number of exclusive titles that have a certain quality standard that you know when you go out and buy a Nintendo game nine out of ten times it's going to be great quality you're going to have a good time with it and you're going to be happy that you went out and bought a Nintendo Switch even if you already own a PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X console so why can't Xbox fit into that role it doesn't matter if you never beat them all that matters is you're in the fight like do something give people a reason to want your product because you're not doing that like people will point to Hi-Fi Rush you know that's great if you enjoy the game, but Hi-Fi Rush is a double-A, at best, indie tier game that is about five to eight hours from what I've heard. That is not the reason why people went out and bought a console like the Xbox Series X that was marketed as quote-unquote the world's most powerful console. It is up to Microsoft, just like it is up to Sony and Nintendo, to produce first-party software that showcases the potential of that hardware they sold their customers. And in the case of Microsoft, their first next-gen only AAA release, keep in mind also for $70 AAA release as well, was a complete and total technical mess on the quote-unquote world's most powerful console. And when you're looking over the fence at, you know, studios that Sony has that are releasing games like God of War Ragnarok, Horizon Forgotten West, you know, Demon Souls remake on the PS5, you're looking at games that look incredible. You're like, wow, I see a generational difference here between my PlayStation 4 and my PlayStation 5. Sony is getting their studios to actually take advantage of the hardware I just shelled out several hundred dollars for. But when you look at a game like Redfall, you're like, this looks like it could run on the Xbox One back in 2013. There's nothing graphically impressive about it. It doesn't even run at 60 FPS, which Phil Spencer in this interview basically admitted is going to be months down the line of actually coming out once they actually manage to address the technical issues with the game aside from the terrible frame rate. So it's just not a good look. You guys are giving everyone a reason to not buy your console. And I understand Microsoft wants to move away from the console model. They want to become like games as a service, the Netflix of gaming, whatever the hell you want to call it. I get that. But the problem is they sold people on the traditional console model. They got up on stage and promoted the Xbox Series X as the world's most powerful console. Console. They have not demonstrated that capability whatsoever in any of the games they release from a technical standpoint and also from a quality standpoint. Sony and Nintendo are running laps around them when it not only comes to quantity, but also quality. And that's the issue here. If Microsoft doesn't want to compete with Nintendo and Sony in the console space, why are you releasing a console that you directly compare to other consoles in the console space? space. Why are you misrepresenting people on everything you're selling? And Phil even owns up to that in this interview, basically admitting that they willingly misrepresented the nature of Redfall's gameplay and showing off PC footage and acting like that was going to be representative of the gameplay experience you're going to get on the Xbox Series X. In terms of lessons learned, and I'll, I'll even go back to the Redfall videos on IGN of showing videos of the game running at 60 on PC. Um, 
at the point knowing that the game was going to run 30 frames per second at launch on console. Like, we have to be transparent about what we're showing, that what we're showing is representative of what our console customer, our most committed customer to our brand, financially committed, what they're going to see, what they're going to play, and that transparency just has to get better. Um, and I'm not pointing at anybody but myself. And that's where you just have to really draw the line. I mean, sure, he took accountability in this interview, but if you've ever watched any other Phil Spencer interview following another Xbox controversy, all you heard was more of the same. Him owning up to the issues, saying they took away something from it, they're gonna learn, they're gonna improve moving forward, and two years later down the line, we'll be in a very similar situation, and we'll hear the exact same script being read off of. The simple fact is here, Phil has been in the position he's been in for 10 years now. And prior to that, he was already very high up in the Xbox chain of command. Like I believe he was the head of like Xbox first party studios or whatever the title was, I'm not entirely sure. But the point of the matter is he's worked within the Xbox division for I believe almost two decades at this point. This is not someone who's green to the gaming industry. He's not learning the ropes of his job title. This is a guy who should be seasoned, experienced, and knows what the fuck he's doing when it comes to delivering great games from the studios that Microsoft has in-house. And the fact that he admitted that they basically took a hands-off approach to Redfall, even though this is a studio they just acquired for $7 billion, and then at the very end of development, finally decided to go in and send in support staff. That is just mind-blowing to me, dude. Like, you all spent $7 billion on this company, you didn't even bother to check the fuck in? Like, it's basic stuff, dude. It really is basic. And I don't understand how someone can be in this job for 10 years and not, like, understand basic things like checking in on your teams that are releasing AAA games for a full $70 price tag that you've been marketing the absolute shit out of. Like, I am very much convinced that the majority of Redfall's budget went to the actual marketing material and not towards the actual development because the marketing material for that game looks insanely good while the game itself looks absolutely terrible. And it's just a classic case, like we saw with Crackdown 3, where the actual marketing material for the game looked exponentially better than the final product we actually received. So part of me doesn't think that it's just a Bethesda problem. I think it's also a Microsoft problem. But rolling back to kind of like Microsoft saying that they don't want to compete in the console market traditionally against Nintendo and Sony, my simple question is, is why is your strategy then to buy a studio like Bethesda and make their games exclusive? If you can't compete with Nintendo and Sony using the traditional console model, why are you buying these studios to make their games exclusive to your console like Nintendo and Sony do in their business model. Like, two and two are not adding up to four here. Like, this is a completely contradictory statement to what we're actually observing Microsoft is doing actively within the market. Because every single acquisition they have made to date, with the exception of Mojang, which, you know, to their credit, every single one of those games is multi-platform, but every other studio they've bought, eventually the games become exclusive to Xbox past a certain date once they start releasing new titles. And if you are not looking to compete with Sony, why are you copying their business model of releasing exclusive content? Why are you buying up studios to keep them off of Sony platforms? Why are you buying studios to keep their content off of Nintendo platforms? I think it's great Microsoft brings their games to PC, but it just, it doesn't make sense to me. There's too much contradiction here. There's too much mixed messaging. They literally get up on stage one day and compare the Xbox and say, it's way more powerful than the PlayStation 5. It's the world's most powerful console. It has the greatest games lineup in Xbox history. You know, they bought Bethesda for the Xbox console to bring great exclusive content out. And then we get a game like Redfall. And then immediately after that says that they don't want to compete in the traditional console model like Sony does. It just, it doesn't add up to me, man. And you know, Phil Spencer is more than able to change the direction of the company, but there needs to be some consistency. This should be something that you do next next generation. You don't sell people on a $500 console and then just, you know, when things don't go your way, you just abandon ship, give up all hope and go, oh, what's the point of trying anyway, man? We're just gonna lose. Like, it just seems like Phil Spencer has seen way better days, man. He just seems defeated. He's down. And I mean, at one point in this interview, he's literally hinting at the fact that he's basically on his last, like, I guess, chance here where basically there's a pretty good probability that someone else may take his job at Microsoft. Right when and and you know I, I guess that at some point I will have enough knocks against me that it, 
did somebody else here? Um, but you know, this entire thing is just wild to me, man. And this is why I want to take some time and make just like an overall video again on the state of Xbox, which I kind of did a while back, but holy shit, man, there's, there's really just too much to unpack here. And I feel like I could make like probably an hour to two hour long video on this thing. I mean, hopefully it doesn't turn out to be that long, but I just needed to get some stuff off my chest, man, because I really do want Xbox to do well because I love Xbox's franchise. I would love nothing more than to be enjoying a new Gears of War game, to be enjoying Halo Infinite, to be enjoying the next Fable game. I think the concept of Avowed sounds incredible, like Obsidian's take on a Skyrim-like game. That sounds awesome. I want those games to be great, but when you look at a game like Redfall and you look at the fact that someone like Phil Spencer is basically willing to let that game go out the door and essentially shoot it in the back of the head before both feet can even pass the threshold because they release it in such a buggy, broken, incomplete state, it just doesn't give me any sort of hope, man. And it's just really sad to see. And I'm not even saying that Phil Spencer should lose his job because this is the thing I don't think many people are thinking about. It's like, who's going to take his place if he does lose it? Like, who are they going to promote? Are they going to bring in Matt Booty? It doesn't really seem like he does a very good job. Who is going to replace Phil Spencer? So I think people demanding that he get fired and everything, you know, take a step back for a second because the person you may get could be even worse than what we have now, which I don't really think a lot of people are considering because there are very few people in this world that are actually qualified to run a company like Xbox. I know it's very easy for everyone to sit back and play armchair CEO and pretend like they could do a better job than Phil's doing right now, but I guarantee you 99% of the people acting like they could would crack under the pressure in the first week and wouldn't be able to handle the day-to-day -day stuff that Phil is actually responsible for. So I want to give credit where credit's due. I understand the situation Phil's in. He's between a rock and a hard place, man. Like, he really does not have an easy out. On one hand, they're getting absolutely obliterated by Sony, but on the other hand, all of their failures are by their own self-inflicted wounds, and situations like Redfall only make that even worse. And it just begs the question of, is he the right guy for the job? But then it also brings up the question of, well, if Phil's not the right guy, then who is? Who can Microsoft tap into to fix this? And what's a realistic timeline for things to actually get under control? Because in 10 years, if they haven't been able to turn it around, how many more do they need and will they ever get to the point where Xbox can actually compete with Sony or even a majority of the AAA studios in the video game industry on putting out consistent, high-quality games from their own internal studios? And that's where I think we are now with Xbox, and that's the main takeaway I have from this interview, is if I was an Xbox-only gamer or an Xbox fan or fanboy, whatever, I would not have high hopes after hearing this. This sounded very defeatist. It sounded like Phil Spencer was basically throwing in the towel. He doesn't know if he has any sort of job security at this point. And it just seems like there's no clear vision for what Xbox wants to be in this industry other than the bargain bin of games or the place that studios go to die. And that's the issue I have. And that is my main takeaway. This was par for the course for Phil Spencer's apology tours. And I really do not think this was a good look. If I were him, I would have skipped this interview altogether because in reality, I think it did more harm than good. But anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts on this in the comment section below. I'm sure it will be a very, very fun conversation. <laughs> but if you enjoyed this video or agreed with anything I had to say, make sure to smash that like button. I would greatly appreciate it. And as always, I do want to thank you all so much for taking the time out of your day to check out this video and for all the recent support as well. You guys are the fucking best and I really do appreciate it. And I will catch you guys next time. Thank you.